One of the most controversial dog training tools around is the prong collar, or some people call it the pinch collar. However, it's a very humane tool used properly. I don't advocate people to use this without some proper training, but today I wanna to talk about the proper fitting of a prong collar. I see prong collars all the time that are way too big on dogs, and the most common way I can see this when people do this, when they put the prong collar over the dog's head to put it on. That tells me a couple of things. One, it's the wrong size because it's way too big on the dog. And two, it's very scary to do that to the dog because you can poke him in the eye with a prong and all that. This is why I call this a pinch collar, not a prong collar, because to get it to go on and off the dog, we simply pinch the ends of the prongs and that's how we get it to be on the dog. So, Goofy, lay down. This is a medium or a large prong collar. It's way too big for this dog. Goofy is a 70 pound Belgian Malinois and what we use on Goofy is this size collar. And this is the small 2.25 millimeter um, this is the Herm Springer, and it works very, very effectively and very, very well. One, it's a lot smaller. He doesn't notice the weight on his neck. Two, it's much more effective in its correction when it does pinch. And three, it's just a better size. Real importantly, you'll see a lot of these collars super cheap on Amazon or at the pet store. Before you buy them, run your finger along the ends of the prongs and make sure the ends are polished, right? So if you can see this real close, you can see I'm running my fingers along the ends and everything is polished, there's no problems, it's not gonna hurt my dog's neck. So let's talk about that for a second. If this is too loose on your dog's neck, what you're gonna have happen is it's gonna slide around and it's gonna cause the abrasion that everyone's accusing you of, of inflicting on your dog when it's not the collar that does it, it's the incorrect sizing of it. So the way this collar works is we put it high up under the dog's chin here and high up behind the dog's ears. Now this is a perfect size for Goofy because it sits up high, it sits very, very snug on the dog's neck and it doesn't move. So when I give the correction here on this, on this um, ring here, it simply gives the correction without any movement in the prong collar itself. Couple things else to look at. I know he's a good boy. When you first condition your dog to wearing a prong collar, use a lot of treats. Use a lot of positive reinforcement that when he sees this collar, he's gonna see there's treats coming. And Goofy already knows this collar because he's been wearing it for years, but he knows that when he first saw this collar, he got tons of treats for the collar being there, tons of treats for, oh, there he goes. Goofy, hop back up here. Come on, hop up. And tons of treats every time this collar went on. So. Let's look at it again. Look at, the, look at the collar for a second here. There you go, Goofy, you can have that treat. The newer collars all have this piece here in the middle, which is in the dead middle. It sits right on the, of, of the center of the dog's throat. Goofy, lie down. Um, lie down. Good boy. It sits right in the center of the dog's throat, right here when the collar is on. And some people say it's to put less pressure on the front of the neck. Some people say it keeps the uh, correction dispersed evenly throughout the whole collar. I don't like it. So personally, what I always do is I take this off on both sides here, like this, and then I piece the collar back together the way they were originally made by doing this. And when I do this, I'm gonna to have to flip these around as well on this side. So that means I'm gonna lose this link here. I'm gonna take this prong off. And now you'll see that the collar moves in one solid fashion in one direction. So that if I have to adjust it on the dog, I can. So now my collar is going to fit this way on my dog. And again, remember, whoops, I made a mistake here. So what I need to do here is I need to make sure that this chain hangs totally straight like this and this prong goes into here. So now if I have to move it around on my dog's neck, I can, I have no problem with that at all. But the collar again, as I said, sits very, very high up on the dog's neck. Don't dra drape it over the dog's head. It sits up high on the dog's neck and it connects right in here. So no, no looseness in the collar, nice and snug. And the other thing to talk about as well is how are you gonna correct your dog on this collar? And I'm gonna show you that as well. Take this off. There's two ways to correct on this collar. One is using the dead ring, 
which is putting these two together and then it just functions as a very static, a very taut correction here. The other way is to use it as a martingale collar, which means wherever you are here, if this is on the dog's neck, all you'll do here is simply put a small amount of pressure here. Please watch my other videos that, that explain to you how to use the pinch collar. Please learn a lot about this collar because it's an amazing tool. It requires very little pressure on the dog's neck, unlike a flat collar, which oftentimes can cause tracheal damage. This won't. This takes all the pressure from the regular collar, from the flat collar, and puts that pressure on these little prongs. I want to give you one more really important tip. That is when you're using a pinch collar, again, I like to use the smaller collars. A lot of people like to use the smaller collars use a backup with with the collar the way you're going to do that real simply you're going to put this collar on the dog nice and high connects right behind the dog's ears and a real simple tip that's going to make life really easy for you is take your snap and hook it on a nice choke chain or a martingale up here and then come on in here and see this with the video the same snap you hooked into your choke chain you're going to hook into the live ring on the pinch so that if anything should happen right here and this pinch collar comes undone I don't lose the dog I still have the dog by the choke chain and that's a little tip that's going to help save your dog help save you and if you're working with a dog that has some aggression issues it's going to protect any dog that might be around so that's a little tip on the pinch collar how to fit it how to use it is in my other videos. I'll put those at the end of this video and as well in the description to watch those. Learn the tool. Don't be one of these people who criticizes the tool without knowing much about it. There's plenty of critics of the pinch collar out there, yet there are plenty of people who are doing amazing work training dogs extremely humanely, like myself with Goofy, in uh, using tools such as the pinch collar or the prong collar. Not so evil, not so bad at all. In fact, look, put it on myself. Here, it's on my neck. No damage, I can pull here as much as I want. No damage done here. As hard as I wanna pull, I feel the pressure here from the prongs on my neck as opposed to a cinching movement that's gonna hurt my neck or, or collapse my trachea. This here, this little simple information tells me that, actually it tells me that Goofy and I have the same neck size, um, but it's telling me that this is a way I want to train the dog to go into this direction, go into this direction, sits up high, no damage on my neck, and the skin on my neck is a lot thinner than the skin on Goofy's neck or any dog's neck that you're gonna be using it on. So, that's it, pinch collar or prong collar.